The Life and Sad Ending of Johnny Mathis Johnny Mathis was born John Royce Mathis on September 30, 1935, in Gilmer, Texas, the U.S., the fourth of seven children of Clem Mathis and Mildred Boyd, both domestic cooks. The family moved to San Francisco, California, settling on 32nd Avenue in the Richmond District, where Mathis grew up. His father, a singer, and pianist had worked in vaudeville, and when he saw his son's talent, he bought an old upright piano for $25 and encouraged him. Mathis began learning songs and routines from his father his parents also ran his fan club. His first song was My Blue Heaven. Mathis started singing and dancing for visitors at home, at school, and at church functions. Mathis is of African American and Native American heritage. When he was 13, voice teacher Connie Cox accepted him as her student in exchange for work around her house. Mathis studied with Cox for six years, learning vocal scales and exercises, voice production, classical and operatic singing. The first band he sang with was formed by his high school friend Merle Saunders. Mathis eulogized Saunders at his funeral in 2008, thanking him for giving Mathis his first chance as a singer. Mathis High School a high jumper and hurdler, and he played on the school basketball team. In 1954, he enrolled at San Francisco State College on an athletic scholarship, intending to become an English teacher and a physical education teacher. While there, Mathis set a high jump record of 6'5 half. This is still one of the college's top jump heights and was only 7 centimeters short of the 1952 Olympic record of 2.04 meters at the time. Just as when he was in high school, Mathis' name was frequently mentioned in the sports sections of the Northern California newspapers. He and future NBA star Bill Russell were featured in a 1954 sports section article of the San Francisco Chronicle demonstrating their high jumping skills. During one meeting at the University of Nevada, Mathis beat Russell's highest jump attempt that day. Mathis was often referred to as the best all-around athlete to come out of the San Francisco Bay Area. While singing at a Sunday afternoon jam session with a friend's jazz sextet at the Black Hawk Club in San Francisco, Mathis attracted the attention of the club's co-founder, Helen Noga. Then she became his manager in September 1955. At San Francisco State, Mathis had become noteworthy as a high jumper, and in 1956 he was asked to try out for the U.S. Olympic team that would travel to Melbourne, Australia, that November. Mathis had to decide whether to go to the Olympic trials or to keep his appointment in New York City to make his first recordings. On his father's advice, Mathis opted to embark on a professional singing career. His LP record album was released in late 1956 instead of waiting until the first quarter of 1957. Mathis' first record album, Johnny Mathis, A New Sound in Popular Song, was a slow-selling jazz album, but Mathis stayed in New York City to sing in nightclubs. His second album was produced by Columbia Records vice president and record producer Mitch Miller, who helped to define the Mathis sound. Miller preferred that Mathis sing soft, romantic ballads, pairing him with conductor and music arranger Ray Conniff, and later, Ray Ellis, Glenn Osser, and Robert Mersey. In late 1956, Mathis recorded two of his most popular songs, Wonderful, Wonderful, and It's Not For Me To Say. Also that year, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer signed him up to sing the latter song in the movie Lizzie 1957. His appearance on the popular TV program The Ed Sullivan Show in June 1957 helped increase his popularity. Later in 1957, he released Chances Are, which became his second single to sell a million. In November 1957, he released Wild as the Wind, which featured in the film of the same name and was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Song. He performed the song at the ceremony in March 1958. 
The week before his appearance at the Academy Awards, Johnny's Greatest Hits was released. The album spent an unprecedented 490 consecutive weeks through 1967 on the Billboard Top 200 album charts, including three weeks at number one. Later in 1958, Mathis made his second film appearance for 20th Century Fox, singing the song A Certain Smile in the film of that title. The song was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Song. By the end of the year, he was set to earn $1 million a year. Critics called him the Velvet Voice. During the summer of 1958, Mathis left San Francisco with the Nogas, who sold their interest in the Black Hawk Club that year, and moved to Beverly Hills, California, where the Nogas bought a house. Mathis lived with the family. Mathis appeared on ABC's The Pat Boone Chevy Showroom on January 1, 1959. Mathis had two of his biggest hits in 1962 and 1963, with Gina and What Will Mary Say. In 1962, Ebony Magazine listed Mathis as one of 30 35 millionaires on their list of America's 100 Richest Negroes. In October 1964, Mathis and Noga failed to find a common voice, he decided to separate from Noga. After splitting from Noga, Mathis established John Matt Records and Rojan Productions, to handle all of his concert, theater, showroom, and television appearances, and all promotional and charitable activities. While Mathis continued to make music, the ascent of the Beatles and early 1970s album rock kept his adult contemporary recordings out of the pop singles charts, until he experienced a career renaissance in the late 1970s. Johnny Mathis had a 1976 Christmas number one single in the UK with the song When a Child is Born. In 1978, Mathis recorded Too Much, Too Little, Too Late with singer Denise Williams. The lyrics and music were arranged by Nat Kipner and John McIntyre Valens. Released as a single in 1978, it reached number one in the U.S. It also topped the U.S. R&B and adult contemporary charts. Too Much, Too Little, Too Late was certified gold and silver in the U.S. and in the U.K. by the RIAA and the British Phonographic Industry respectively. It was his first number one hit since his 1957 chart topping Chances Are. The duo released a follow-up duet, their version of You're All I Need to Get By, peaking at number 47 on the Billboard Hot 100. In 1982, they were credited for performing Without Us which became the theme song for the American sitcom television series, Family Ties, from its second season onwards. The success of the duets with Williams prompted Mathis to record duets with a variety of partners, including Dionne Warwick, Natalie Cole, Gladys Knight, Jane Oliver, Stephanie Lawrence, and Nana Muscuri. A compilation album also called Too Much, Too Little, Too Late, released by Sony Music in 1995 featured the title track among other songs by Mathis and Williams. From 1980 to 1981, Mathis recorded an album with Chicks Bernard Edwards and Nile Rodgers, I Love My Lady, which remained unreleased in its entirety until its 2017 appearance in the 68-disc collection The Voice of Romance, the Columbia Original Album Collection. Mathis returned to the British Top 30 album chart in 2007 with the Sony BMG release The Very Best of Johnny Mathis in 2008 with the CDA Night to Remember and again in 2011 with The Ultimate Collection. Mathis continues to perform live, but from 2000 forward, he limited his concert performances to about 50 to 60 per year. He is one of the last pop singers who travels with his own full orchestra. With the exception of a four-year break to record for Mercury Records in the mid-1960s, he has been with Columbia Records throughout his career, from 1956 to 1963 and from 1968 to the present. He has had five of his albums on the Billboard charts simultaneously, an achievement equaled by only two other singers, Frank Sinatra and Barry Manilow.
He has released 200 singles and had 71 songs charted around the world. Pieces of music from numerous Mathis albums continue to be used in motion pictures and television more recently in the TV series Mad Men, which also features a recurring minor character named John Mathis, and in the TV series called The Midwife. He has taped 12 of his own television specials and made over 300 television guest appearances, with 33 of them being on The Tonight Show. He appeared on the show with Carson's successor, Jay Leno, on March 29, 2007, to sing The Shadow of Your Smile with the saxophonist Dave Cause. His appearance on the Live by Request broadcast in May 1998 on the A&E Network had the largest television viewing audience of the series. Also in 1989, Johnny sang the theme for the ABC daytime soap opera Loving. Mathis served as narrator for 51 Dons, a 2014 documentary film about the integrated and undefeated 1951 San Francisco Dons football team. The team was denied a chance to play in a bowl game because it refused to agree to not play its two African-American players, Ollie Matson and Burl Toller, who were childhood friends of Mathis. On January 14, 2016, Mathis performed to a sold-out audience in the villages as part of his 60th anniversary concert tour. Mathis appeared in the season 14 finale of Criminal Minds, Truth or Dare, in which he played himself as an old friend of David Rossi and served as best man at Ross's wedding. In personal life, Mathis during an interview with CBS News, Sunday morning on May 14, 2017, Mathis discussed the Us Magazine article and confirmed he is gay. I come from San Francisco. It's not unusual to be gay in San Francisco. I've had some girlfriends, some boyfriends, just like most people. But I never got married, for instance. I knew that I was gay. Mathis spoke to many news sources, including CBS, about his sexuality and his story about coming out. In 2003, the Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences awarded Mathis the Lifetime Achievement Award. This special merit award is presented by vote of the Recording Academy's National Trustees to performers who, during their lifetimes, have made creative contributions of outstanding artist significance to the field of recording. Mathis has been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame for three separate recordings in 1998 for Chances Are, in 2002 for Misty, and in 2008 for It's Not For Me To Say. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for recording at 1501 Vine Street in Hollywood, California. Probably, right now is his worst time when his health is slowly deteriorating. Thank you for listening to the story about the life of Johnny Mathis like and comment on your opinion in the comments section below.